Hey there everyone, this is Danielle, with some first thoughts on West of Loathing. Uh, if you're unfamiliar, this is basically a spin-off title from Kingdom of Loathing, the massively multiplayer online role-playing game that you play in your browser that's really silly and pretty cool and fun. Um, so this is, yeah, they've made a single-player game that you play just on your local system instead of in the browser, and it's set in sort of a parody of the Wild West, as you see in, like, cowboy movies and stuff. Um, and yeah, I am... Like, this, this isn't my first look at this game, I am quite familiar with it. It's also available on GOG and things like that, but the Steam version... the Not Steam. What's this thing called? The Switch version was discounted quite significantly, like, just a couple dollars, so I thought I'd pick it up and take a look, see if it measures up to the other versions of the game, because I do really like this game. Um, but yeah, so the original Kingdom of Loathing, it's pretty much a single-player experience, despite being massively multiplayer, technically. Like, you can trade items and stuff, but mostly the gameplay is you going on adventures by yourself. Um, West of Loathing, it takes those that adventure system and... Uh, it has very different gameplay to the previous title, really, if you think about it. Okay, this is a bit of a fun gimmick here. Um, yeah, on the, um, GOG version, you just use the mouse to shoot stuff, but they wanted to keep that in, so use, I'm using the right stick to aim instead, which is kind of funny. Interesting enough, that's actually digital. Like, I can only move in eight directions, and it moves at the same speed no matter how far I tilt the stick. It doesn't really matter, because this is just a gimmick, but it's kind of strange. Anyway, uh, we've got a couple of options here. We can change volume for dialogue, combat, and horse. <laughs> uh, we can also change our volume and sounds. I mean, oh, that was speed, sorry. Dialogue, combat, and horse speed. Then volume for music and sound effects, combat speed, and rumble. Some pretty basic stuff. Um, there were some joke options in the original version of the game. I don't know if they've been included here. Um, we'll see if they show up later. Anyway, new game. Okay, so... Yeah, um... On this first screen, it basically randomizes the character you get. So, like, if you shoot, uh... There, you get a dude... Or a bear. Okay, so, yeah, you pick... A couple of genders. Um, not a whole lot. It's alright, I guess. And I guess you get different cat-themed names? I don't know. I didn't really experiment too much with this. You don't get to pick your own name, it is randomized. Um, but it's pretty silly. Oh, hang on. Edit your name. Is there an option to do that? I don't think so. None of this really does anything. Like, the reward going up doesn't affect the gameplay at all. It's just fun. Um, but yeah, so we've got a character, Kitty Rogers, there we go, play. Let's get going. <laughs> okay, so yeah, this game, the original Kingdom of Loathing has six character classes, this game only has three, and they're roughly, you know, you've got your, uh, um, fighter, and your wizard, and your rogue, basically. Um, in the original game you had two, like, sorcery classes, and two uh, roguelike classes and two, uh, fighter-like classes. So one of each in this game. Uh, we're gonna go with the... Beanslinger, I think. Magic and cooking are inextricably intertwined in Loathing, and the Beanslinger is the mystical master of both. You've heard there's a shortage of cooks out west since the cows came home. Due to most of the cooks having been brutally killed by the cows. <laughs> so yeah, um, the two... Uh, magic classes in the original Kingdom of Loathing are the Sorcerer and Pastomancer. Um, so you can see they've adjusted things a little bit, but it's still the same basic idea of having food that you do magic with. Left stick to move. So yeah, you just walk around like this. Uh, it's digital, like you can move it at right angles and stuff. You may as well just press the button like this. This weird poster appeared here one night. Let's stick to move. May as well choose the D-pad though. It doesn't make a difference. Goodbye bed. Time to head west to chase my real dreams. Goodbye desk. Comb hair. You comb your hair one last time. XP. You gain one XP. Progress towards next skill up. One out of five. 
You read the spine of one of your books, Gladys Swift in the ancient city. Rufus liked this one as much as I did. The Adventure at Grizzly Gulch. Rufus liked this one as much as I did. Of course, of course of Vulture Cellar. This was one of my favourites. The Secret of Monster Outhouse. Mum gave this one to me a few years ago. I don't know if this just goes on forever. Skeleton Tower. There we go. Okay, yeah. Um, it is a little ableist, but yeah, you can you can get book. You can, there's a skill called um. S silly walking. I'm gonna call it silly walking. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can unlock that as a skill, and basically all that does is uh, make you animate differently when you're moving around. Uh, it's randomized like what animation you use each time you change areas, I think. Um, but yeah, it's it's a fun little gimmick. Okay, yeah, so the joke options are here. Uh, so you've got uh, silly walking, which you can turn back off if you want, but you might as well leave it on. Uh, colorblind mode is my favorite joke, really. This entire game is in black and white, like you're seeing right now. There is no color. So colorblind mode does not affect anything. Hence it's saying you never know, which is really funny. <laughs> um, automatically spend XP I usually leave on. Um, basically it just tries to give you like the skill that it thinks you should have next. You can manually do it if you want, but yeah. Uh, I don't usually change much for anything else here. Uh, you can turn off the phonograph here, which will make this room quiet. Hey, Russell, how you doing? Caw. I'm gonna miss you, buddy. Caw, caw, caw. That doesn't even like a, like a, like a, um, like a, whatever that is, crow, a crow? You grab a cricket from your cricket bag and feed it to Russell. He cooes appreciatively and nuzzles your hand. You open your bedroom window, not pictured, and unlock the door to Russell's cage. He winks at you, calls one last time, then flies away to the west. Okay, that's all we can do in here, I believe. Oh yeah, some of the silly walks are pretty funny. <laughs> oh my goodness. Your living room. Nothing on the hat rack today. What a mess. Stack the firewood. You gain one XP. So yeah, there's a bunch of random stuff you can interact with in most areas. Not literally random, just like, silly stuff. Um, you pick up one of your brother's weird books and flip through it. Solutio problem problemata pro problematis adjumetrium citus pertinentis. How many different languages do you need to know to learn about numbers? Uh, it says the same thing. Grunlagen Aina Allgemein and Mannigfaltig. I can't. I can't read that. German is hard. It looks like it's randomizing things. Uh, I think they have just. I think they have math stuff that they've done in different languages. Uh, you can take a puzzle cube here if you want. So tidy. Not much else you can do in here, but you can get the puzzle cube, which is just there. Fiddle with it. Your brother already had it most of the way solved, but you figure out the last couple of moves. You gain one XP. Yay! So, um, so far it's looking fairly similar to the, uh, GOG version, just with slightly different controls. Uh, there weren't, like, hotkeys to open your bag and the options menu and stuff like that in the previous version. Uh, mostly because you just clicked on them. Um, but, yeah, having hotkeys like that is nice. No time to screw around in the woods, time to head west. Yeah, we want to talk to our family. Your mom smiles warmly as you approach. I am leaving now, mom. I'm gonna miss you, kiddo. Oh, and before you leave, I got you a present. A present? Yep, it's that book you wanted for Crimbo. I know it's early, but... Uh, hmm. So, yeah, you get to pick which of these skills you want. Uh, I think I want... Picking locks. That's the one. Enjoy it. You got an item. Locks and how to pick them. Please be careful out there. Write us a letter when you can. She hugs you. I will, Mom. Goodbye. So yeah, you just read this. You quickly memorize the entire book. You got a skill. Lockpick and expertise. Nice. After you're done reading it, you donate it to a local orphanage. Soon those orphans will be able to make their escape. Go, orphans, go! So yeah, you can see there's some pretty silly stuff here. Your father morosely jabs at the haystack. A hat doesn't fit you, Dad. <laughs> I'll go in. I'll go into it. It's time for me to leave. His lip quivers a little. Listen, I... 
want you to have this. It's your grandmother's favourite can of beans. You got an item. Can of infinite beans. Thank him. Thanks, Dad. Good, good luck out there. Be sure to say goodbye to your mother. I did. Goodbye, Dad. Your brother Rufus is standing here looking nervous. He's pretty good at looking nervous. Give him his puzzle back. You hand him the puzzle and he starts fidgeting with it. Say goodbye. Hey Rufus, time for me to head west. I still don't understand why you're leaving. He's got a point, you know. Why are you going west anyway? Uh, to help people. You've read the papers, Rufus. The people out west are in trouble. They need all the help they can get. But it's so dangerous. 60% of the people who go west get killed within a year, and that statistic is from before the cows came home. I'll be okay. You worry about taking care of mom and dad, I'll worry about me. Okay, if you say so. I still think you'll be dead by Crimbo. I'll miss you, Rufus. Crimbo is, is the loathing equivalent of Christmas, in case that wasn't clear. Give him a playful punch on the arm. Leave. Okay, so that's all we can do here, I believe. Uh, the can of infinite beans. Oh yeah, that right, that, that buffs a couple of my stats, which is handy. Uh, I'll probably stop using it when I get something better, though. <laughs> Go west, young woman. Yes. West of Loathing, hitching a ride across the Great Plains. Director, Zach Johnson. I think I skipped this every time, so I might give it a watch to see what happens. Cinematographer, Victor Thompson. Film editor, Kevin Simmons. Dialect coach, Riff, Riff Connor? Stunt coordinator, Wes Cleveland. <laughs> Key grip, Chris Moyer. Boom operator, Ryan Ike. There is no voice acting in this game, to be clear. So, yeah. 200 miles later. Okay, I clearly should have watched the opening credits before because they're pretty funny. <laughs> well, the bad news is you fell off that card and got knocked out for a couple of hours, and now you've got no ride, no meat, and no prospects. The reason meat is capitalized is that that's money. That they don't have, like, regular money. They, they use meat. The good news is that you're in a town rather than in a gulch somewhere. Not much of a town, though. Get up and dust yourself off. The town of Boring Springs. A turnip! Get turnip. You got an item, dusty turnip. Uh, a turnip covered in grit. Increases your muscle mysticality and moxie by one for the rest of the day. So yeah, um, the original Kingdom of Loathing had a lot of focus on eating things in order to get various skills. Um, not skills, like to get adventures and to buff your stats and things. Uh, this game works a bit differently because it doesn't have a daily uh, t turn limit like the original does. So instead, uh, st stuff that buffs you works until you sleep, basically. Uh, for example, this turnip, it will buff all my stats for the rest of the day. Uh, I probably won't eat it for now. 300 miles is too far to go on foot, you need a horse. Ah, pointy! I am walking into these cacti on purpose, in case that wasn't clear. Uh, you do get a skill for doing that, so I'm just gonna walk into a couple more. Uh, it should be giving it a skill. Uh, yeah, you can step into poops and it makes squishy noises. It's pretty gross. As you walk into the saloon, the crazy-eyed guy... Uh, the, the, the guy sitting to the left of the door shrieks and waves at you to get your attention. Hey, where's your hat, Dad Nabbit? Well, I... You can't drink in here without a hat. Taint proper. He points to the take a hat, leave a hat box next to the door. Check out the box. You look through the hat box and find a magical black Stetson. That looks like something you'd wear. You got an item, barely enchanted hat. You grab the hat and put it on. Thanks, sir, uh, Pete. Thanks, Pete. He gives you a friendly, if somewhat twitchy, nod. Say, gal. Yeah? You heading west? Even you want some company, I'd be more than happy to come along. Just let me know. Well, uh, no pressure. All right, I'll keep it in mind. Uh, he's a spittoon. It's a spittoon. People spit into it. You know without even looking in it, it's absolutely disgusting. Let's look at it. Yeah, it's full of spit. Regular spit, gross tobacco spit, chewing gum, it looks like a few teeth as well. It's disgusting. 
And the smell. Even from a distance, it smells horrible. Let's look closer. You're now on your hands and knees, peering into a filth encrusted spittoon. I don't... I don't understand what is wrong with you. Wait, is there something shining at the bottom? Get it. You reach your hand toward the spittoon. Even before you touch it, you can feel the grossness in the air, like a greasy fog enveloping the stinking brass horror. It smells like the vomit trough at a mes mesquite? A mesquite barbecue eating contest. You hesitate. Never surrender. You plunge your hand into the awful soup. It makes a sound like glop. Your skin is burning. Your eyes start to water. Search. Your fingers make contact with something. You pull your hand out of the devil's tureen slowly, not daring to risk splashing the contents all over yourself. You appear to have gotten some kind of ring. Probably some kind of disease as well. Congratulations? You got an item. Nasty ring. Hooray? Yeah, um, there's a bunch of spittoons in the game. They all have good items in it, in them, but it's really gross to get them. <laughs> so yeah, we have a nasty ring now. Um, yay. <laughs> and you can see it buffs all my stats by one. So th at this point in the game, it's decent to have. These two are playing poker, or at least trying to. They keep looking back and forth in their hands to the how to play poker card that came with their deck, biting their lips and concentrating real hard. Can I play requires 20 meat. Good luck, you two. Can't play, I'm going to meet yet. Zzz. What do you say, Pete? Who, me? Well, heck, I say all sorts, all kinds of things. For instance, horse feathers is a centipede in my rattle patch. Uh-huh. Pete takes a swig of his whiskey. See you later, Pete. You already have a hat. What would you do with two? You walk up to the bar and wait patiently for the bartender to notice you. While you're waiting, you see a sign taped to the back wall reading, Reward for lost mugs, 25 meat each. The bartender finally notices you. Howdy, cow girl. Howdy, barkeep. Name's Kitty. What brings you to our little backwater? Ask about work. Oh, the usual. I came out west to make my fortune. Not having much luck so far, though. Any work around these parts? Unfortunately, Boring Springs already has more people in it than jobs. It's more of an errand town, if you catch my meaning. If you're looking for a real job, I recommend talking to the railroad people up by Dirtwater. Uh, okay. Uh, we do want to return some lost mugs, um, because we can get some cash that way. Should probably leave them alone. It's locked. Pick the lock. Requires a needle. Yeah, we don't have any needles. Uh, will we be able to find them around? The woman glares at you. You should probably just let her drink. Howdy, I'm Kitty. Howdy, Kitty. I'm Aris. Nice to meet you. What do you do? I'm the town hustler. I don't know what that is. I'm the town horse selling guy. Gotcha. How's that working out for you? Oh, these horses are just, those horses are just flying out the door. So business is booming? Nice. No, I mean the horses keep running away. I haven't sold one in ages. Oh, is that why you're in here drinking instead? Hey, yep. Me being in here drinking instead of watching the horses is probably how they keep escaping. It's one of those vicious circle things. Well, I'm in need of a horse. Do you have any left? One. Kind of a boring one, but it's got four legs and a back to sit on. Come see me at the stable. I'll be happy to show it to you. Okay. Uh... Who's the lady drinking whiskey out of a beer mug? That's Susie. She's a rancher from nearby. A real tough broad. I ain't recommend you pester her. I should be doing, like, a, a cowboy accent, but I don't know how. Well, why's that? I lost a whole family to a cow attack recently. Got some pent-up frustrations about it. Ouch. So yeah, um, there are some mugs we can find around Boring Springs that we'll be returning. Among other things. Uh, there's the chef. Step right up, step right up. Braid's the name and trades the game. You seriously doubt that his name is Braid. Howdy, Braid. What are you trading? Well, madame, today I'm trading locks for soap and a stick of dynamite for a needle. And to the cunning skinner who brings me three rattlesnake hides. Well, for that adventurous soul, I will trade a fine silver pocket watch. Yeah, we can't get rattlesnake hides, so that's not an option. We can get soap and we can get dynamite. Uh, and needles and stuff. Who trades right now, thanks. Uh, if we'd chosen a different uh, skill book at the beginning, we could have bartered with Braid in order to get some stuff for free, but we didn't do that. We have Lockfishing instead. You approach the weird Cactus Man hybrid. He smiles at you. Howdy, Cactus Man! Howdy yourself, and the name's Bill. Cactus Bill. 
What happened to you, Bill? Well, to be honest, partner, I drank too much cactus beer and it turned me into a cactus. Doc Ellis warned me this would happen, but I didn't listen. And that's why they call you Cactus Bill. No, that's just a coincidence. Oh, does it hurt? It does what hurt? You know, being a cactus. Oh, <laughs> no, it's actually kind of nice. The natural fermentation processes inside the cactus part of me keep me pretty drunk most of the time. I guess it is a mite boring. Yeah, I bet. Wouldn't be so bad if I had something to read. You don't, have enough, you don't happen to have a newspaper or anything, do you? No, sorry. Well, if you happen to find one, keep me in mind. Will do, Bill. Some loose dirt. If I had a shovel, I could go digging. Nope, you're not allowed in Topeka anymore, remember? By the way, you can use the ZL or minus buttons to open your map and travel to new locations you've discovered. I haven't discovered anywhere yet, so there's nowhere I can go. Make your own damned guide to Boring Springs and its environs. Uh, I don't want to talk to you, Bray. There we are. You got a perk, mostly scabs. So yeah, you just run into a bunch of um, a bunch of cacti, and that gives you that perk I just got, uh, which is in here somewhere. There it is. It it buffs your maximum HP a little bit, basically, which is handy. Uh, which you got an item, a broken board. So now I have a weapon, but it's not very good. <laughs> uh, we can go to the BS Horsery here. It's a haystack. Dig through it. Hey, a needle! You got an item. Needle. Get it? <laughs> I can get two needles that way, like that. Afternoon, ma'am. What can I do for you? How's business? Oh, you know, every day I'm hustling. Tell you the truth, though, it's pretty terrible. All my horses keep running away. Well, except for this completely ordinary one. That's rough. Maybe I can help? Oh god, yes, thank you. Please, I'd go fetch them myself, except for this injury. I'd give you 300 meat each, finding them. How many are there? Three. Here, let me see your map. They pretty much always run away to the same places. He draws three little pictures on your map. You discovered three new map locations. Orehole Mine, Boring Springs Boneyard, and Thousand Snakes Gulch. Why these places? I think they're like environments that are thematically appropriate. Here, when you find one, feed it some of these oats. That should send it back here. You got a bag of- you got an item, bag of homing oats. How does that work? They're special pigeon-infused oats. Okay, we will do. See you later. Yeah, the, the main draw of this game is really the writing. Which I really enjoy. <laughs> uh, we're gonna go to the shop. Hello, chef. Howdy, stranger. Welcome to Boring Springs. I'm the chef in these parts. The what? He sighs. The sheriff, okay. Blasted sign painters. Say, you wouldn't have to be looking for work, would you? Depends on the work. Well, how does this grab you? There's a gang of hoodlums around here what call themselves the Fricker Gang. Last time I arrested one of them, they busted him out and took my cell door with him. It ain't, uh, well, it ain't much good without the door. And? I need somebody tough, smart, and or slick to go fetch it back for me. Why don't you do it? You're the sheriff, after all. I gotta stay here and practice my chair tipping. Okay, I'll give it a shot. Funny you should say that, because I'm sending the deputy along with you, to keep you out of trouble. He takes a pistol out of his desk and hands it to you. You got an item, deputy pistol. Deputy? You deputized a gun? New in town, maybe you ain't noticed, but there ain't much to do here except drink. Here, let me write down what the weather Fricker Gang's hideout is for you. He makes a little note on your map. You discovered the Fricker Gang's hideout. Got it, I'll be back with the door. I might not actually do that, because cops are the worst. Um... But, you know, now I have a gun, which is nice. I can shoot some things. And you can see there's a mug in here, which is the reason I actually came in. Uh... Anyway, um... So we're gonna head over to, uh... Let's go to Orhole Mine. Here we are. Oops. Still some meat ore in this cart. Dig through it. Score, you gain 50 meat. Also a mug. Also, we can go to this toilet here. This definitely does not bear closer scrutiny. Fair enough. Uh, not much else we can do in here, but we can go inside. Have a look around. This mechanism is labelled Cargo Elevator Control. A poster on the wall behind reads, Blasting Cap Stories Level 1. Plungers Level 2, both kinds. Level 3 Tools. Uh, I'm going to leave it alone for the moment, just have a look around. Uh, 
Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah. Unrefined meat nugget. So yeah, you can see I have two run two recovered mugs. I'm gonna keep getting some more. Okay, so I want the elevator to give me some tools first, so I'm gonna make it do that. Pick the lock. You managed to unlock the toolbox, but the needle is ruined in the process. Most of the tools inside are rusted away to nothing. It was a pretty nice crowbar. You got an item. Crowbar. Okay, I have a crowbar now, so that's cool. Uh, I want a blasting cap, so I'm gonna send this to the first level. These crates are all labelled blasting caps. The period is part of the label. That's why it's inside the boats like that. Grab one. You pry one of the crates open with your crowbar and grab a blasting cap. I think that didn't- yeah, that didn't break my crowbar, so that's cool. Also, a crowbar is a better weapon than a broken board, so I might equip it. There we go. This is a device for converting electricity, which has only recently been discovered, into explosions, which are awesome. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we want to put the blasting cap on the TNT. We also want to use the plunger. So, okay. uh, as in the, the explosive kind of plunger. Plungers, the sign lied though, there's only the one kind. Take one. We've got nine in the detonation plunger. Hook up the plunger to it. Yeah, that looks safe. This looks dangerous. Add a blasting cap. Okay, you've succeeded in putting yourself in grave danger. This makes you nervous. Press the plunger. Kaboom! How did the pulse even get in here? You see the dark horse, barely. Approach her. Hey there, girl. It's okay. I'm a friend. The horse shies away from you. Though in this case, it's more like cripple cripplingly introverted away from you. Not a big fan of that adverb, I've got to say, but the, the, the verb itself is fun. Reassure her. Oh, come on. Don't be like that. Look, I bought some oats for you. They aren't poison or anything. In retrospect, I guess that wasn't very confident thing to say. Pat her on the nose. As you reach out and pat her nose, the horse ducks and steps further back into the shadows. Oh, come on. Feed her the oats. Take a handful of oats out of the bag and hold them out to the horse. Here you go, yum yum. I can't do a good snort. Of course not. <laughs> she sidles away from you warily and makes a surprisingly good attempt at hiding in her own shadow. Oh, it's Fluttershy. Come on, please. Eat the oats yourself. Look, they're fine, okay? See? Take a handful from the bag and toss some in your mouth. Ugh, it's like the roughest, blandest breakfast here I've ever eaten. Still, it's better than dry cat food. Don't ask. You smile to her the horse that you're fine, and realize you've unconsciously turned around and walked out the door. Jeez, these are powerful. The horse looks at you wearing and you end in a cheerful way. See? Perfectly fine. The horse punches her shoulders and seems to shrink slightly as you pack her nose. She doesn't actually flee, that's something. There's a good girl. Flee? Take the oats. The horse finally seems relaxed enough around you to so offer her a handful of the oats. Wearily, she grudging you. Gestures or something behind you. You turn around to look, but you don't see anything. When you turn back, she's gone. Oh, okay then. Hey, huh? What's this crack? Examine the hole. You bend down, since you'll shine your lantern into the crack in the rock. You can just barely make out a square shape down in there, well out of arm's reach. Looks like somebody dropped a small metal box into the hole, though you don't know if that was to hide it or discard it. If you're truly desperate to find out what's in there, you could try reasoning with the rock. Your primary argument would be a bundle of dynamite. Perhaps you could persuade the hole to widen enough to grab the box. I need three dynamite to do that. I don't have any, so... Got some meat. Uh, I might come back for that. I suppose it makes sense that there aren't analog controls, because, like, it doesn't really matter. But, yeah, it's, it's still weird. Let's go to Thousand Snakes Gold. Yeah, there's some snakes here. One of these rocks is really shiny. Grab it. You've got an item, shiny rock. It's shiny, and it's about the size of a rock. <laughs> this snake looks sleepy, but not that sleepy. Okay, so you always initiate combats in this game. At least, almost always. There's a couple of random encounters, but usually it's like this. You walk up, and you can't get past this critter. No matter what you do, you have to attack it, initiate a battle. Like this.
Okay, there is some colour. Just a little bit. <laughs> it's not really important though, that would still work in without the colour. Uh, so yeah, the way this works, you can see you have one action point. That's like, um, like your mana or spell points or whatever. Um, but they get regenerated after you've done the battle, so you don't really need to worry too much about conserving them. Um, so yeah, um, we'll probably start with, uh, Lava Father. There we go. Launch a Father Bean at the Snack. You can see that did lots of damage. And I took one damage, but that's okay. Do a melee attack. There we go. Victory. You've slain a snake. Fall and I call you Snake Murdering Kitty. XP, you gain 3 XP. Yeehaw! Skill up. Gumption level 2. Yay! What's Gumption? Your level of get, get up and get her done. The higher it is, the quicker you are. Okay, so up to my speed, attack points, act, sorry, action points, and spleen capacity. Fair enough. There's another snake here. Another snake? Well, I guess it's not called one snake gulp. And you can see I'm fully healed, so I don't have to worry too much about that. Uh, I'm do the same thing as before. Uh, okay, that little uh, minus sign means I'm poisoned, so... Oh, I mean that little one in the drop over there, so I'll take a little more damage, but... Not enough for it to matter, really. You made short work of that long snake. You gained 3 XP. Yay! This snake looks really angry. You're gonna need every trick in the book to beat this one. I'm good at tricks. Whoa, they're quick. Yeah, they, they got first strike, which is a little inconvenient for me. Um, yeah, I, I think I'll be okay. I'll just uh, keep using my skills again. Oh, I'm out of action points. Uh, okay, I'll do this. Plunk. Uh, I will take a bit more damage than before, but I should be alright. There we go. Victory! Nice work. If the whole cowgirl thing doesn't work out, you can always get a job as a snake exterminator. Skill up, mysticality level 2. So that should make uh, my spells and stuff better, basically. The amount of damage you do with spells and the amount of damage you take from spells and elemental attacks from bad guys. Yep. This horse has gone snake... Uh, I, don't, I don't really like the words we have here. This horse has gone snake... Wacky. Let me hear some other kind of wacky before. Approach him. Hey there, boy. Hey, fella. I'm a friend, okay? It's cool, right? Be cool. Don't freak out on me. Really? You calmly look the horse in the eyes. One of them is fixed in a glassy thousand yard stare, and the other is revolving madly in its socket like he's thinking of trying to escape in every direction simultaneously. He looks to be calming down a little now that it's clear you aren't actually made of spiders, though. Paddy's not. You carefully and gently pat the horse's nose. He twitches a bit. Okay, a lot. But seems to recognise that you aren't going to eat his eyes or suck out his soul or whatever madness is bouncing around that skull of his. That's a good boy. Be in the oats. Are you hungry, boy? I've got a little treat for you. Snarf. You feed the, the wacky horse some of the homing oats and it gallops away with a whinny. Or rather, or rather a whin -yargle. Hopefully he's headed home and not into the 12th dimension. Cool. Okay, uh, I... I think there were any, uh, I'm, I'm walking back slowly because I want to make sure there wasn't, like, a mug here. Doesn't look like it. The Boneyard! There is a mug here. Our founder, Zephaniah Boring, 1806 to 1885. He was actually a really interesting guy. Covered mug. Benjamin Crockett, 1320 to 1364. He showed up way too early. Beauregard Skelton, Captain, 3rd Cav Cavalry, 1820 to 1866. This grave is really noisy. A skeleton, you're not getting past it without a scuffle. Scuffle it is. Got the jump on him. Okay, so yeah, I got like a surprise round or whatever, which is cool. Uh, let's use the lava bubba. Goodbye, skeleton. That skeleton collapses into a pile of loose bones. 
Yeehaw, a skill up. Glamour level two. Uh, glamour. Is your appreciation for the finer things in life has increased? You'll be able to consume more cocktails, and you'll also be able to actually afford them. Okay, so it buffs my meat gains, my item finding bonus, and liver capacity. Which determines, you know, what alcohol I can drink, that sort of thing. That guy just wouldn't stay put. Timothy Cochran, 1855 to 1895, devoted husband. Elizabeth Cochran, 1887 to 1895, beloved daughter. Silas Cochran, 1895 to 1895, a baby. Oh no. Your pulse quickens as you get near the spooky translucent horse. Approach her. You approach the weird semi-transparent horse cautiously so as not to startle her, but you quickly come to the realization that this is not a horse that startles easily. Hello there. Hi, I'm a friend, okay? Nay. That's a little strange how you do that without opening your mouth. Pat her on the nose. You pat the horse's nose, which is very cold. If you're going to ride, you'd want an extra saddle blanket to keep your butt from freezing. Pat her on the nose again. Yep, still cold. Brr. Feet of the oats. Here you go, girl. Have some oats. You hold out a handful of oats for the horse, but she just sort of stares right through you. Brr. Please don't look at me like that. Pat her on the nose again? Try the oats again? You hold the oats out again, but the horse continues to ignore them. Well, what's the matter? Are they not spooky enough? I'm not sure how to make oats spooky. I guess I can put some bone meal on them, but I don't have anything handy to grind up bones with. Grave dirt? Winnie! Is that a yes? Weird. Okay. Add some grave dirt to the oats. You sprinkle the oats with just a little bit of grave dirt and hold them out again. The horse gazes expressionlessly at them, then eats them. And with that, she glides away in the direction of town. Bizarre. Okay, I've seen a bunch of places I could dig if I had a shovel, but I don't have a shovel. <laughs> um, which is a shame. Oh, uh, let's go to the Fricker Gang as well and see what's here. Ah, uh, we don't have foraging, which is a shame. Finders keepers. Recovered mug and pair of silver cufflinks. Cautiously approach the Fricker Gang. They're pretty engrossed in their poker games. It doesn't actually require that much caution. You hide behind a barrel and eavesdrop on the conversation for a while. The one with the eye patch is quiet, but you gather his name is Snipe, and that the squirrely one is your brother Wimpy. What's your play here? I'll try to leave without alerting them if I can. Okay, yeah, you can tie up the sleeping ones while they're without waking them up, which is kind of handy. Um. Oh, you can't tie that one up. Weird. Um, I'm gonna leave him there. He mumbles and hands you a bar of soap by sinking before sinking deeper into both sleep in the tub. Cool. So I have soap now. Uh, I'll tie him up. You grab a nearby length of rope and carefully tie his hands together, then to the handles of the tub. The sheriff can come collect him later. You got a perk. Honourable. Uh, I believe that's because I didn't shoot him. A strong moral compass and an accurate ethical protractor. Nice. Howdy boys, deal me in. Who are you? How'd you get past Thud and Soapy? What do you want? It's me, Bimmy, your sister. He squints at you. Bimmy? You ain't Bimmy. Sure I am, ask me anything. <laughs> Alright, what's, what's our mom saying? That's easy, Mrs. Fricker. Wimpy reaches for his gun. Say now, let's not be hasty. The heretofore unseen other member of the Fricker gang sneaks up behind you and knocks you unconscious. Ow. At least they were kind enough to drag you outside if they beat you unconscious. Yup. Well, I'm outside now. I guess I'll try that again. This guy's still tied up. Yeah, I can just try it again. That's kind of funny. Uh, it's Bimmy. I am so Bimmy, I stole some Rube's face. Ha, huh, you always did have a knack for face rustling. <laughs> What's new, Bimmy? We gotta get out of here and fast. Fast, Wimpy, the Pinkertons are onto us. We'll be here any minute. Dag, nabbit, come on, Snipe, let's hightail it. I'll catch up with you guys later tonight. 
won't be noticed. He and Snipe hurriedly pack up their belongings and flee the cave. You congratulate yourself on your attentiveness, memory, and strong interpersonal skills. Let's grab the door and skedaddle. Also a mug. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't actually have to arrest them, I can just tell them to leave by claiming to be Bimmy and that I stole a face. <laughs> this game's pretty funny. Back to the town of Boring Springs. Do, 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 do. If I come into the horsery, there will now be a bunch of horses. I didn't know how you spotted her hiding in that mine, but thanks for sending back my dark horse. Sure thing. Looks like my pale horse made it back safe. Thanks for your help. Thanks for finding my crate, my wacky horse. He's eating loco weed again, wasn't he? Not that I noticed. That's all of them. I can't thank you enough. Here's a little extra for you. Thanks. Uh, just browsing. Hang on, I want to hear about his injury. You did something early about an injury? Yeah, I busted my knee while mucking out the showroom. Don't ask how, it's embarrassing. I was gonna give Doc get Doc Alice to have a look at it, but she gave up doctoring. Why'd she do that? Nobody knows. She just shut herself up in her office. Said she wouldn't talk to anyone except Nurse Whiskey. Is that an actual nurse, or...? I'm pretty sure she was just being sarcastic. I see. Yeah, uh, Doc Alice is one of the characters we can take with us as a party member. Uh, if we can convince her to join us, at least. Uh, soap for a lot. Yeah. I'll trade this soap for a lock. Braid, though you really don't think his name is actually Braid, takes your soap and hands you a lock. Well, I have a lock now, so that's cool. Um, I think I need to give that to the sheriff, along with the door, so he can actually lock his cells again. I see the freak again hasn't both stopped for your breathing. Did you rescue my cell door? You hand the sheriff his door and he hangs it back on his hinges. Nice work, stranger. This here prison cell just got about four times more secure. Are there any fricker boys left for me to round up? Yeah, one or two that are asleep on the job. I'll go round them up shortly then. Looks like I owe you a reward. He produces a big bag of meat. You gain 400 meat. Got another little task for you if you've got the time. Should be a lot simpler than the last one. What you need? Well, the frickers busted the lock when they took the door. You're gonna need a new lock. I just so happen to have one. You hand the sheriff the lock. That'll do nicely. The sheriff puts the lock on the cell door, then accidentally drops the key and it clatters into the cell. Hellfire. Don't suppose you know how to pick a lock, stranger. You got a needle handy? Let's see what I can do. Pick. I unlocked your cell for you. The sheriff walks into the cell and picks up the key. He looks around for a place to hide it and eventually sticks it under his hat. Thank you kindly, stranger. If Boring Springs ever gets any more criminals, I'll better watch out. That's a good job you've done. Don't mention it. Here, take this as a souvenir of your time in Boring Springs. You got an item. Replica Sheriff Badge. I believe that buffs some of my stats if I wear it. Yeah, one armor. It's made of plastic, so, you know, whatever. <laughs> Howdy! Howdy, good to see you again, kitty. Say, I don't suppose you could help me with a little goblin problem. I found these mugs? Much obliged. You hand in the recovered mugs and collect your bounty. You gain 125 meat. Thanks. Uh, what's the goblin problem? Yeah, one of the cowpokes that came through here from Dirtwater didn't wipe his boots off and got gulch goblin spores all over every damned wear. I thought I cleaned them all up, but I must have missed one in the basement. I can help with that. Much obliged. I'll unlock the basement door for you. Oh, and you'll need this. You got an item. Weak fungicide. I'll take care of it. Nurse brand whiskey. Interesting. I should have read that, actually. I guess we never establish your age because in the drinking age here is can read stuff at the bar. Pile of old newspapers. Take one. You got an item. Boring Springs Gazette. April 20th, 1895. The goblin shouts, Briak! Attack the goblin. This goblin's actually a bit stronger than the previous enemies I've been facing. So, I'm gonna buff my armor. That doesn't actually use up your turn, which is interesting. Um, attacks usually do, but other stuff doesn't. Oh, I can use the fungicide. Maybe I should do that. Yeah, that was really easy. <laughs> Having dispatched the goblin, you put yourself, pat yourself on the back for a job well done. 
Yeah, you have to get the whiskey to give it to uh, Doc Alice because she wants whiskey. Howdy. Howdy. Good to see you again, kitty. I took care of that goblin. Thank you kindly, kitty. I knew you was a stand-up gal the moment you walked in here. She reaches under the table and grabs a bag of meat. Here you go. It's the least I can do by way of thanks. She came to under meat. Tip your hat to the bartender. Just thought I'd say howdy. The bartender smiles. Well then, mission accomplished, I reckon. Cute. Uh... The woman glares at you. Are you Susie Cochran? How... How did you know my last name? Uh, I saw the graves in the cemetery. I'm sorry for your loss. Susie scowls bitterly and mutters into her whiskey. I saw it happen. Saw the whole damn thing and couldn't do nothing about it. Cows, right. I don't know what those things are, but they aren't cows. Not anymore. What happened? It was a raid. See, Ma and Pa used to ranch cattle back before... Well, before they came home. Pa didn't make it, but Ma and I managed to rebuild. We ranched pigs instead, and she left me the place when she passed. Go on. Well, I guess a passing herd sniffed out that it used to be a cow ranch, and they attacked. A couple days ago. Happened so fast, I didn't even have time to get my rifle out of the gun safe. Cows smashed in the front door, and a fire started out back by the root cellar. House went up in blazes, just like that. What did you do? I... There wasn't anything I could do. Couldn't get upstairs to the kids because of the fire. I saw Tim trampled right in front of me. I just... She drains her glass. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Sorry. She refills her mug from a bottle on the bar and doesn't reply. What will you do now? Head west, I suppose. Nothing keeping me here and no desire to stay. I can't leave without my rifle, though. Why not? It was Ma's rifle. It's all I got left of... of anybody. Left at the ranch like a damn fool. Listen, can I ask you a favour? I need someone to go get it for me. Susie shows you on the map where her ranch is. You discover a new map location, the Cochrane Ranch. Okay, so Susie is one of the party members I can take. Uh, I can also take Doc Alice, so I'll think about who I want to take. Uh, because I'm not really sure. Did you bring you something to read? You give him the newspaper you found in the basement of the saloon. Much obliged, partner. Now let's see here, what can I do to return the favour? Oh, I know, my shovel! I left it behind the outhouse at all whole mine. It's yours if you go and get it. I'm sure you'll find a use for it. Thank you. Behind the outhouse at all whole mine. Got it. Thanks, Bill. Don't mention it. Now if you could just kind of stick that newspaper to my face before you leave. Stick the newspaper to him. There we go. Now he can read. So yeah, um, we can go get the shovel and then dig around a bit. Where Bill said to look, we find out house. Hey, he wasn't kidding. Not that this would, would have been a funny thing to kid about, I guess. You got an item. Shovel. So yeah, now I can dig. Uh, which is cool. I'm not sure where I want to dig, though. I don't really remember where all the places that had loose dirt were. Let's have a look around. I think there might have been one here. Yes, dig. You got a silver nugget. <laughs> Uh, I think the boneyard is somewhere I can dig. Yeah, dig up the grave. Fight. Captain Skeleton. Let's use the beach shield and then hit him with a crowbar. Oops. I accidentally quit the battle. I wouldn't feel too bad about that. He was a captain after all, and you weren't even a private. Touched yourself off. Let's try that again. So yeah, there's no penalty for failing, unless you've used up items, I guess, in which case they'll still be gone, I think. Uh, but yeah, I accidentally fixed the quick fight option, so let's just do it again. See, so yeah, I'll be able to do it, no problem. I'm well equipped to fight Captain Skeleton. My powerful bean shield. You do, you do, victory. You've put a stop to Captain Skeleton's unnatural animation. You got an item, old cavalry saber. You got an item, gold tooth. So yeah, the saber is a better weapon, so that's good. Uh, five to six, I think it's better. Is it? No, it's the same actually. But I mean, it, it looks cool, so I'm gonna use it. Uh, do, 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 do. Do, do, I think that's all I can dig. Do, ba, do, do. Thousands next gold. Is there someone to dig here? I don't remember. No.
good. Uh, in fact, I'm pretty getting tired out. They're all going to be gone now, of course, uh, because the cops got them, which I feel bad about. Grab a gab dub. Nope, no dirt there. Okay, uh, let's go to the Cochrane Ranch. Cochrane Ranch, established 1891. All the water in this trough has boiled away. Susie's ranch house is burned to the ground. The outhouse is the only thing still standing. Something behind this door is making some pretty awful noises. Go through it anyway. Cochrane Ranch, cellar. Looks like someone was in the middle of fixing a knife. Grab it. You got an item, varmint skinning knife. I you collect skins from beasts after combats. These pies were not safe. They seem looks angry. You're not going to make it that safe without dealing with it. Deal with it. A pyrobove. Okay, that's 15 health. Hmm. Hot damage doesn't work super well on these, so I think bean shield is the right choice. Shoot it a couple times. And yeah, it does three fire damage as you can see. It's, it's pretty intense. I should be able to manage that. And yeah, the fire damage is getting worse and worse. There we go. Victory. You defeated that nasty cow skull floating in a cloud of flame. Yeehaw, skill up, muscle level two. Guns. It's the Cochrane family's gun safe. Grab Susie's rifle. You got an item, Susie's rifle. It's an old rifle, but obviously it's been well cared for. There are six little notches carved into the stock. Got the rifle from Susie. For Susie. I mean, it's not really from Susie. There's another spot I can dig. Oh, hang on, I can dig these up? Ah, cool. Yeah, let's do it. It's nasty work, but someone's gotta do it. Yeah, it's going to level me up a bunch if I do that. Some loose dirt. Another recovered mug. For some reason. <laughs> uh, Braid, do you have anything else of interest? No. You find my rifle yet, stranger? Yep, here she is. Susie's eyes well up with tears as you hand her the rifle, and she roughly scrubs her sleeve across her face before any of them spill over. Thanks, stranger. I didn't catch your name. I'm Kitty. Thanks, Kitty. Can't rightly say what this means to me. She looks at the rifle for a long moment, then looks back up at you. She sighs. Well, that's enough wallowing in misery. Time for me to hit the road. If you want me to tag along when you head west, you just say the word. Sounds good, Susie. Uh, found this mug. Thank you, the bartender. Um, let's go talk to Alice, I suppose. Um, we're coming up on an hour and I haven't actually left Boring Springs yet. Get lost. Offer whiskey. Whiskey delivery for you, Doc. What brand? Nurse whiskey, your favourite, I'm led to believe. Didn't know she makes house calls. Alright, hold on. Here a battle, she unlocks the door. Enter the house. Doc Alice looks to be in about her 50s, her hair is greying and her face is lined, but her eyes are still clear and sharp. If bloodshot. She holds out her hand. Whiskey. Stat. She cracks open the whiskey and fills a small flask she takes out of her pocket. Then she puts the flask back in her pocket and starts chugging out of the bottle. Jeez, Doc, that doesn't seem healthy. Who's the doctor here? Me or you? Okay, point taken. Hey Doc, can I look at your books? Sure, if you want to. Not that they're gonna do you much good in this doomed forsaken hellhole. You should try being less cheerful, Doc. You survey the books on Alice's shelf. They're all medical textbooks, except for a few. Um, I can read all of these. Okay, let's actually read what I just said. You start flipping through the Goblin language book. It's confusing at first. You eventually get so engrossed by the time you break, take a break from reading. Several blurfs have passed, and you also know the blurf is the Goblin word for hour. You've learned how to speak Goblin. Sort of. Got a perk. Goblin tongue. 
The book tells the story of a legendary treasure, a massive chest full of premium meat, secreted in the hidden sense, not in the extruded sense, in the western desert by an old cow hand named Curly Butterfield. This book purports to be a Civil War surgeon's autobiography, but if looking through it you mostly just find lists of reasons that drinking alcohol is bad, so it's actually a work of ludicrous speculative fiction. <laughs> At least there are some useful appendices in the back, and some diagrams of appendices. Yeehaw, gumption level 3, made like a tree and leaf. The stove is spotless. Either she's really compulsive about cleaning or she never cooks. Uh, wow, shouldn't this be further away from the fireplace? <laughs> hmm. This vanity doesn't look like it sees much use. Preen a little. You grab a pair of tweezers and plucks on your more unsightly eyebrows. You gain one experience. Doc Alice continues to pour whiskey down her neck, occasionally stopping to breathe. Um, is everything alright? That depends on how fast I can get this whiskey into my bloodstream compared to how fast my liver filters it out, and I can't talk and drink at the same time, so... She glares at you meaningfully. So, what's the matter, Doc? What's the matter? The whole world's gone to hell in a horse cart and you ask what's the matter? Bandits? Cow demons? Dead men walking? Why don't you go ahead and pick one or I'll drink to that? Dead men walking? You haven't seen it? Corpses and skeletons staggering around like puppets with half their strings cut looking to take a bite out of the living? Oh yeah, there was a skeleton in the cemetery. It's nice to get some outside confirmation I'm not losing my damn mind. But how is that even possible? It isn't possible. It goes against everything I know about medicine. Dead patients don't get back up. Patience? Oh, ouch. Doc Ellis turns away, grimacing. Every doctor loses one now and again. You never get used to it, but... Well, it happens. But what doesn't happen is them coming back afterward and looking for revenge. It must be pretty rough. Rough? Missy, I don't think you comprehend the situation. It's not just patients, it's neighbours, friends, husbands. Oh. Um. Um, indeed. She turns away from you and focuses her attention back on the bottle. What's the deal with all the TNT? And so when I feel like I'm about to go, I can blow myself into bits so small there won't be nothing left to come back. That seems... drastic. Drastic hell. No way am I taking the risk of becoming one of those... things. Fair enough, I suppose. Do you have any idea what's causing the... resurrections? Well, I heard a rumour. A rumour? What is it? It's when you're getting complete information from an unverified source. Uh... Anyway, what I heard is there's a fellow out west that's causing it. A necromancer, they call him. Supposedly he's sending magic out into the world somehow. Magic like we beanslingers used? Never heard of any beanslinger raising the dead, have you? Her scowl deepens. That'd be one hell of a can of beans. Hmm. I really like that joke. <laughs> What's a rumor? <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so uh, we, we could just take um, Miss Cochran now. Uh, or we can keep talking to Doc Alice and get her as a teammate. I think there's someone else as well, but I don't quite remember. Can you sell me a horse? Sure thing, I should warn you though, horses get mighty attached to their riders. Once you've bought one, you'll be able to change your mind later. Which one are you interested in? I like the dark horse. I'll take the shifty looking dark one. Good choice, she's a sneaky one, I'll sell, you, sell her to you for a thousand meat. When you say sneaky? Well, she's real quiet, and she likes dark places. Yeah, I remember. And it's looking how she's trying to hide behind the other horse there. She seems, sure, she seems pretty smart. I'll take her. Thanks. Here's the keys. Ride safe. Give her a name. Uh... Yeah, Epona. The default name. That sounds great. I'm gonna put Epona in. Oh, no, wait. I'm gonna call her Fluttershy. Also, I like how the character limit is 500 characters. That is one long name. There we go. Are you sure you want to name your horse Fluttershy? Yes. Alright then, Fluttershy the horse. It's got a nice ring to it. Okay! Oh, and I almost forgot. Free with every horse purchase is a complimentary map. You got an item. Southeast West map. Thanks! Okay, so I have a horse now. Which is, uh, this one. It's a new horse, Fluttershy. Ride Fluttershy out of town? No, not yet. Not just yet. Uh, yeah, so we've nearly finished the tutorial at this point. You don't have to do all these things I've been doing. There's a bunch of optional stuff. About that necromancer. Assuming he exists, what about him? Well, maybe someone ought to try to stop him. Doc Alice gives you a sharp look. You. Because I know you ain't talking about me. Why not you? A grey-haired old woman that knows as much about fighting as a squirrel knows surgery? 
Did you hit your head on a bar stool, kid? You aren't that old. If I was going to pick someone to go up against a necromancer, it would be someone who also knows about death, but in a scientific way. A doctor, right? Doc Ellis stares hard at you and takes a swig from a bottle, saying nothing. And it sounds to me like you've got plenty of motivation to get the job done for your friends and, and everyone. She continues to look at you. You can see the gears turning in her head. She beats doing nothing anyway. Beats locking yourself in a house full of TNT and drinking yourself to death. You aren't even doing any doctoring anymore. She winces and looks away. Then she shakes her head slowly. You seriously expect me to ride out west by myself chasing a rumor? Doesn't have to be by yourself. I'm heading west too. Tag along with me. Maybe we can find the guy and put a stop to him. It's crazy. Impossible. Impossible like raising the dead is impossible? Alice crosses her arms and regards you thoughtfully. A spark slowly brightens in her eyes. Alright kid, what the hell? Let's give it a shot. Cool. I think I will take Doc Alice. I like her. Do, do, do. Can't go to the peak anymore. Okay, so now we can leave town. Uh, it'll let us take either Alice or Susie with us when we try to leave, I believe. So, let's walk this way. Once you leave Boring Springs, you won't be able to come back. Any unfinished business you've got will forever remain unfinished. Are you sure you're ready to leave? Yes. Alrighty then, you're properly horsed and ready to start your new life in the West. All you need now is a partner. Someone to share the trail with. Someone that you can rely on for emotional and combat support. Who will you take with you? Doc Alex. You knock on Alice's door and tell her it's time to go. Hit the trail. Oh, one last thing before you go. Up until this point, I've been automatically spending your experience points for you. I'm happy to keep doing it, and I promise to give you a nice, well-rounded experience. Shall I keep it up, or would you prefer to decide for yourself where your XP gets spent? You can always change this later in the options menu. Automatically. Alrighty then, let's go. You consult the southeast west map the hostler gave you. It only lists two things, the town of Dirtwater and the Manifest Destiny Railroad Company's westernmost camp. You discovered those two locations. Head for Dirtwater. We're here. This is Dirtwater. That was quick. Day one, the first day of the rest of your life. The sign says room for rent. Inquire within. It's your partner. Howdy, Doc. If we're going to look into this necromancer business, I figure we ought to start with the local cemeteries. Makes sense. Do you know where they are? Yeah, I did some research from the Territory Cemeteries a while back. Territory Cemeteries. So Territory Cemeteries. See if there was a pattern. You okay? Haha, <laughs> sorry. Anyway, there's one not too far from here. Discover a new map location. The Dave Yard. What do you think we should do next? Well, if you're looking to find out the lay of the land, I guess a railroad crew will be able to give you a fairly literal interpretation. Makes sense. Fluttershy wins as you approach. Hi, my main. She whinnies shyly. Oh, Let's saddle up. Okay, so you can see this is this is the map area uh, for the rest of the game. You can't go back to uh, Boring Springs. Dirtwater is the starting area for the rest of the game. Uh, you can hit Wanda, which will basically cause a random encounter near where you are, or you can go to places you know about, like the Dave Yard or the Railroad Cone. Uh, I'm not going to do any of that yet, though. We are going to... Uh, look around in town a little bit. Can I talk to you? Nope. This water is for horses only. Well, I'm one of those, that's okay. This little girl is selling flowers. Buy some. You got an item, sweet selling flowers. Thanks again, lady. Or uh, the flowers give you stench resistance. Because they smell really good, which makes sense, I suppose. Uh, these vacant lots can get filled in later in the game. It's a quest thing you can do. Pretty cool. Lot available. Not a lot available past this point. You saw the sign, there's nothing past here. <laughs> oh my goodness. The puns. Uh. Thanks again, lady. You're cute. Here's a shop. Hello there, welcome to Dirtwater Mercantile. So yeah, we can buy some a variety of things here. Um, probably what we really want is the book here. Um, the disposable binoculars let you look at one thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, the book will teach us a new bean slinging skill, which is very useful. So I think I'll grab that. It includes a chapter about making human-sized or larger automatons and binding them to your will to help with kitchen tasks. Gives bean gold and a combat skill which summons a powerful golem to fight for you. There's an article about butter and an article about beans, and the juxtaposition gives you an idea. 
gives Butterbean, a spell that reduces an opponent's muscle, mysticality, and moxie. So yeah, you can debuff your opponents. There's a recipe that's been scratched out and replaced a bunch of paranoid scrollings. Gives Wary, a skill that increases your maximum AP. Let's get Bean Golem. You practice making servants out of beans or you're really good at it. You got a skill, Bean Golem. Unfortunately, one of your early experiments gets a little rowdy and eats the book. Bad, bad Golem. Yeah, you get one of the skills. So yeah, we have a new skill. Uh, here's the saloon. Uh, there's a spittoon in the saloon. This is a spittoon, which is a sort of brass bucket that people spit into and they're spitting on the floor, because not spitting at all is not an option in this society, I guess. I say this despite knowing you're already pretty intimately familiar with spittoons already. Sicko. Look, the jewel saloon is pretty nice as saloons go. Actual glass in the windows, more than two kinds of drinks, a poker room instead of a cockfighting pit. But this spittoon is still a spittoon. The rancid tobacco spit inside it isn't fancy rancid tobacco spit. <sighs> Here we go again. Alright, fine. You are now hunkered down next to a brass filth bucket, which has probably never been cleaned or empty because you're near the desert and the ambient humidity around here is pretty low. Low enough that the spit evaporates nearly as quickly as it accumulates. So that's good, right? No, that's bad because it's only the water part of spit that evaporates. This brass bucket is half full of the rest of the spit, the toxins and filth that don't evaporate, several years worth, distilled and concentrated until it's the consistency of molasses. People aren't allowed to flick cigarette butts into the spittoon anymore because they bounce out. Search it. You're about to put your hand into a bucket of something the colour and viscosity of maple syrup. Except instead of maple, it's flavoured with the inside of the mouths of people who chew cigars instead of smoking them and have never brushed their teeth. Yeah. Glorp. It feels like putting your hand into a bucket of lukewarm tapioca pudding. Instead, instead of tapioca, it's basically poison. It smells like something someone ran you over a, ran over a skunk, waited a week, and then set it on fire. It feels like your hand is dissolving. Keep searching. You found something. You found a tacky, filth-colored porcelain cow figurine. A useless, disgusting thing that will make a great heirloom for your children, assuming you're still able to have any, and you hate them. You got an item. Filthy porcelain cow. Hooray! So yeah, this is actually pretty good. You can see it buffs your spell damage and your melee damage. So yeah, it's, it's better than whatever I was holding before, which is uh, the Count of Infinite Beans, I think. Yeah, it buffs my spell damage more. It doesn't buff my other stats, but it's still worth getting. <sighs> These guys must have fallen asleep during a brawl. <laughs> Look at them. <laughs> Yeah, that's cute. Well, howdy there. Always nice to see a new face in town. Welcome to the Jewel Saloon. Hi, thanks. I'm Kitty. Glad to know you, Kitty. Folks around here just call me Lloyd. What can I do for you? Nice to meet you, Lloyd. I saw the sign out front advertising a room. That's right. Finest room in the house and plenty of room for your partner, too. You interested? How much does it cost? Well, that's why you're in luck. The previous tenant was a banker fella and he paid a month in advance right before getting himself killed by bandits. You seem like a decent sort. The room's yours if you want it. Gratis. Wow, great! Yep, we have a room now. Uh, which looks like this. Uh, you can insult yourself in the mirror. It's a bit silly. You can't groom yourself. Nice view from up here. There's a postcard on this little table. Take it. You got an item. Blank postcard. <laughs> in case you don't know how the mail works, you send these by going to a building called the post office and giving it to the correspondence wizard who works there. <laughs> Sure. Uh, we already got the shop. Oops. Actually, I should probably buy a couple needles because I think I ran out. Oh, they don't have any. Never mind. Um, I think that's probably enough for the first video. You get an idea of what the game's like. Um, it's got, you know, some fairly traditional sort of turn-based combat with a couple of interesting bits and pieces. Um, now we have a partner, we can actually, like, tell them what to do as well, so we have more moves available to us, that sort of thing. Um, which is cool. Um, and it's got, you know, a lot of puns and it's very fun in that sense and it's, it's, it's entertaining. Um... It's not a super long game, but you're encouraged to play through it as each of the three classes, so it ends up being a bit longer than it, than it might be otherwise. So, it's good. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of really funny stuff in here. Uh, there's a bit of a bit of ableism, as you, sure, as you saw, um, or heard when I read it out, either way. 
Um, but yeah, it's... It's not seriously bad, I guess. It's it's not too bad. It could be worse. But it, it does put a bit of a damper on my appeal, on my liking for this game. Um, which I still do like, and I'm glad I have it to play here, but yeah, it's just not ideal. Anyway, um, that's probably about it for this video. I'm just gonna scroll on, scroll through my menus and stuff and see what's going on. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much everything. Uh, one thing I should mention, the rumble seems pretty good. Like, it's not always maximum rumble whenever it needs rumble. It does seem to make use of not exactly the HD rumble features of the Switch, but at least different levels of rumble, depending on what's happening. Um, which I like. Um, it's not as impressive as something like Odyssey, which was designed around the HD rumble and uses it for all sorts of interesting stuff, but it's still pretty good. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and bye!